tape measure tool has another function besides measuring objects. You can use it to create guidelines, either off an axis or off an existing object. A lot of people try to get SketchUp to create 2D drawings as they start. Generally that's not a good idea, but if you're comfortable with that method, guidelines are a good way to use the program. Let's use a small coffee table as an example. I'll begin by laying out the top 24 by 36 inches. To create guidelines, you click on a line, drag the mouse, and enter a dimension. I'll bring the legs in an inch and a half from the top. and I do that by typing in the measurements window and hitting enter. In SketchUp, the program tries to remember what you did last and to remember that and use it the next time you repeat a function. This saves a lot of time. You can see as I reach an inch and a half, a little window pops up and places the guideline for me. I'm going to make the legs inch and three quarters square. So I begin to pull. I type in 1.75 and hit enter. The next round and when I see the guideline I click the mouse and it's creating the guidelines at the dimensions I want for me. Now to put the legs in place I'll take the rectangle tool click on one corner and then another and I'll repeat this for the remaining legs. So now I have the legs in place in the plan I've got a lot of guidelines cluttering up the drawing window, so I'll take the eraser tool and I can hold down the left mouse button and drag it across the guidelines. As I come across, they're highlighted, and when I release the mouse button, they disappear. To make the legs 17 and a quarter inches tall, to make an 18 inch tall coffee table, I'll use push pull. I'll hover the cursor over a face pull in the direction I want and type in 17.25 and then hit enter. For the remaining legs, they're coming up in the vertical direction and if I click on the existing leg, that will match the height without me having to enter any numbers. The other way that push-pull works is if I double click, it remembers the last dimension I used and repeats it. Now I'll make each leg a group so that I don't have to worry about stickiness. I'm using a bounding box to select everything inside, grabbing one leg at a time and making them groups. Now each leg will act as a single object in the program. I want to put some aprons in between the legs, so I'll use the rectangle tool and I'll click on existing points. If I hover on the distance between the legs and then start my motion down, I can look at the measurements window and see it says 17 and a half, comma, and then another dimension that's varying. If I type in comma 3, the program uses the existing dimension of the legs and then 3, and that will make a face that's 3 inches tall. Now I can use push-pull click on the face, type in .75 and hit enter, and I have an apron that's three quarters of an inch thick. I'll use a bounding box to make the apron a group, and I'll move it in a quarter of an inch back from the legs. I've selected the group, I pick up the move tool, and because I just want to go in a general direction, I can click anywhere in space, start the movement, type in the dimension I want, 0.25 and hit enter. This brings the apron in a quarter of an inch from the outside of the leg. So I can continue around, place the other aprons the same way, using the rectangle and existing dimension. In this case I type 3 comma because I've turned the axis 90 degrees push-pull gives it the thickness. 
I'll draw a box to make it a group. And then use the move tool, place the apron back a quarter of an inch from the legs. I'll just continue around the table. making my other aprons, repeating the procedure, and I'll orbit to get a little better point of view. I'll make this a group and then move it back along the green axis. Again I'm moving back a quarter of an inch typing in the number and hitting enter to get the dimension where I want it. You can see as I'm zooming in and out, one of the ways that zoom works is the cursor needs to be placed over an object to zoom. If I just zoom in space, it doesn't always work. So if you find yourself zooming very slowly, move the cursor over an object. There's the last apron. I'll make it three quarters thick. make it a group and then move the group back. Now you can see the program remembered the last move I made a quarter of an inch. So if I just click when that's visible and the numbers displaying in the measurements window it'll give me the correct spacing. If I don't trust the program and want to check I can grab the tape measure and see that it did indeed move a quarter of an inch back. So now I have a table. I have four legs. Each of those is a group. I also have four aprons and each of those is a group. If I put the top in, I'll be done. My layout lines were the extents of the table. So with the rectangle tool I can click on opposite corners and that will give me the face at the top. Now I'll take push-pull, make the top an inch thick. Well now that I think about it, I don't want the top to be a full inch. I want it to be three-quarters of an inch. To change that, I can push-pull in the other direction, make it a quarter less by typing in .25 and hitting enter, and there I have it. I want to make the top a group as well. So I surround it with a bounding box, right click, and click on make group from the menu. Now I need to move the top up. and I have a couple of ways I can do this. If I remember that it's 17 and a quarter, I can select it, pick up the move tool, click on a corner, and go up the blue axis 17.25. Chances are I may not remember that. So I can use the existing geometry to snap and make the move. What I want to move is the bottom of the top up to the top of the leg. So I'll orbit it a little bit to get a better view. I'll click on the top to select it, type M to get the move tool, and then I click on this corner of the leg. And I'll zoom in to make sure I'm on that point. I'll zoom back out and then click on the top of the leg. I'll hit zoom extents, the top view, then the isometric view. And that gives me a picture of the table. So very quickly, I've made the table. I have all the parts saved. If I want to check the dimensions before I build it, I can use the tape measure to do that and I'm ready to go. I'll just erase these last guidelines and I'm finished. This little coffee table is kind of nice but it's pretty basic. It's a lot like an eighth grade shop class project. We can make a better one. We'll add some details. We'll taper the legs we'll put a profile around the edge of the tabletop and we'll add details 
for the joints, mortise and tenon joints, to hold the aprons to the legs. We'll also introduce a couple of new concepts, components and how to move and copy things. When we worked before, we combined the legs into groups. I'm going to start just making the legs. They'll be inch and three quarters square and I'm making that by typing in 1.75 comma 1.75 after I started to draw the rectangle and then hitting enter. I'll zoom in, I'll use push-pull and I'll bring it up to a 17 and a quarter inch height. So far this is the same procedure we followed in the other table. What I'm going to do is select it the same way we did before. Right click on it but instead of clicking Make Group, I'm going to make Component. That brings up this pop-up window, asking me to give it a name. I'm going to be creative and call it Leg. A component is essentially a group, but it has some special properties to it. The first thing is that it has a name. When I create it, I want to give it a name, and I want to make sure this Replace Selection with Component box is checked. Now after I click Create, it acts and it behaves like a group. Essentially it's one object in SketchUp. What's different about a component from a group is it also has a place to live here in the Components window. If you don't see this when you come up, you want to check In Model from this drop-down list. You can also reach some other component libraries stored in your computer and also online. Now if I want another leg, I can simply drag it in from the components window. If I want to make a change to the leg, I can right click and the option of edit component is here on the pop-up menu. Here's one of the other differences between components and groups. When I have a component open for editing and I change it, it also changes every component in the model that has the same name. This will be important as we see as we make our table. Instead of creating layout lines, I'm just going to make a copy of this leg and place it a distance apart from the existing one. To make a copy, that's another function of the Move tool. You'll notice it says Move Copy when you hover on it. So far we've just used it for moving. If I select an object, click on the Move tool, the tool appears, and if I hold down the control key, a little plus sign appears next to the cursor icon. This lets me know I'm ready to make a copy. I click on the mouse, move a distance apart. I'm going to make this 19 and a quarter. When I hit enter, the copy appears that same distance away. Now because this is a component, there are some other features that I can do with this. When I right click, I have the option to flip along. Flip along the components red, green, or blue. The component saves copies of the axis orientation that were present when they were made. This doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment, but it will in a minute or two. Now I'm going to take both of these legs, get the move tool, hold the control key, copy them both, 32 and a quarter inches away. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to flip them along the green direction because I moved along the green axis. Now if I want to put a taper on the leg, there are a lot of convoluted ways to do it, a lot of difficult ways to do it. What I need to do is first open a component for editing. Then I need to establish a point down the face of the leg where the taper will begin. I'm picking four inches. I'll draw a line on the two outside faces of the leg at that point. Then I'll zoom out, zoom back in, and orbit around so I can see the bottom of the leg. Now because the component is open for editing, everything is lines and faces again. So if I move this line, it's going to stretch the components that are connected to it. 
So I'm going to come in half an inch on that line edge. I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to move it in half an inch. Now if you noticed in the background the other legs were changing also. I click outside to close the component or and zoom around to see what's going on and all the legs are tapered. They're also oriented the same way. They're tapered on the outside faces because I used the flip along when I copied them and made them. Now the guideline was created while I had the component for editing. I don't want to hit delete because that'll take out the entire component. I need to open the component again, then hit the guideline, then delete it. And it's no longer in the way. I'll start making aprons the same way I did before. I'll click between the two points. I'll pause for a moment. I'll come down, type in comma 3, and that makes the apron 3 inches high. I'm going to use push-pull, type in point .75 after I start it, and that makes the apron 3 quarters of an inch thick. I'll select the entire apron, right-click on it, and again I'm going to make it a component. I'll give it the name apron, I'll make sure this box is checked and click create. Now if you notice over here in the components window I have another instance of the apron that exists. I'm going to move the first one in from the legs, typing M to get the move tool going, starting the motion and then typing in .25 and hitting the enter key. To get the apron on the other side I'm going to orbit around to that side of the drawing, go over to my components window, and simply drag the component into the drawing. The move tool is active as I bring it in, so I'm going to click on the end point of the leg just to be sure it's in position. Then I'll move it in on the, re on the green axis the same quarter of an inch. Now I could use that same trick and drag an apron in on this side. This apron is oriented in the same direction it was when I created it. So I'm going to use the rotate tool, which is these two circles chasing each other. I click on that. To use a rotate, I need to establish a point of origin. The colors on the cursor indicate which direction something's going to spin. Sometimes it's hard to control the rotate cursor, but if you get it where you want it and then hold the shift key, that locks it in that direction. I click on one point to start the rotation line and another point. This creates an axis line and now by moving the cursor I can rotate it 90 degrees. This shows down in the measurements window I can also type in the, the rotation angle and click enter. Once it's rotated, I can move it into position and then back in the quarter inch. Now the problem is, although this is a copy, it's too short. The problem is, if I edit the component and use push-pull to make it longer, that affects the other two. I don't want to do that. Hit undo and that undo I, I made by clicking control Z. Well editing the component doesn't work because editing one changes the others. What will work however is when I click on it I right click and bring up the menu and select the option make unique. Make Unique creates a copy of the component over in the components window. So now I have apron, which was the original, and apron number one. Because their names are different, now if I edit apron number one, it doesn't affect the other two. 
So now I have Apron, which was the original, and Apron 1, which is the long version. I can make a copy of the second apron, put it into position, zoom in to make sure it's in the right place, and then move it back on the red axis a quarter of an inch. You may notice that the quarter inch popped up on the screen as I began the move. That's the program remembering my actions. So now I have most of my table. I have the legs, which are components. I have the aprons. What I'd like to do is add tenons to the aprons and mortises to the legs. Because when I edit one instance of a component, the other ones with the same name change, I can drag a component into empty space, come in close, open it for editing, and add a detail like the tenon joints. To add that detail, I'm going over to the toolbar and picking the offset tool. What offset does is it creates a face inside another face. So I first select a face, then type in a distance, and that creates a new face. And I can use push-pull now to make a tenon an inch long. I'll zoom out, pan over, orbit around, come into the other end, and I'll make a tenon on this end. With the offset tool, I pick an edge, I move, start to move in, type in 0.25 and hit enter. Then take the push-pull tool, bring that out to make it an inch long. Now I don't really want my tenon to be that close to the edge of the apron. So I'm going to take push-pull, bring it down half an inch, and then I'll leave the bottom edge close. What I'm concerned about is I don't want to blow out the top of the leg with the mortise. So I'll pan around, orbit again to see this end, and I'll do the same thing to this end of the tenon. I click outside and it closes this component, and although I can't see it, I've added tenons to this component and this component as well as the other one. I can prove that by moving one of these up and looking at it, or I can go to View, Face Style, X-Ray, and now I can see through my model to see that the tenons are there. I'll go back to the View menu and turn off the X-Ray View. And because I don't need this one anymore, I can delete it. Now deleting an instance of a component doesn't have any effect on these in the components window or the other ones in the model. So I can bring a component into the model just to use it for editing and then destroy it when I'm done. So I'm going to use the offset tool again create the face of the tenon, use push-pull to bring it out, that was an inch I wanted to come, bring this end half an inch down, orbit around to the other end, when I have it in view I'll use the offset tool, select the edge, come in a quarter of an inch, get push-pull. Now you notice I'm not clicking up here to the toolbar. I'm using a keyboard shortcut which is the letter P. And that's a much faster way to get the tools than going to the toolbar. So now when I zoom out, I've got tenons on both ends of the long apron. Now I can check and see. Now one way, when I've highlighted it and it turns blue, the selection box comes out beyond the leg. That tells me there's something there. And if I look at it with the x-ray view again, I can see now I've got the tenons in all my aprons. Now adding this kind of detail doesn't take very long, 
but it's really nice when you go to the shop you can prepare a cut list and you can know how big the overall size of the piece is going to be where the joints are located how big the joints are and all the information you need you can take from the model without a lot of figuring out or a lot of math involved now the problem I have I have tenons in the aprons but if I look at my leg I don't have any mortises for them so now I'd like to add a mortise to the leg because I'm working with a component if I add the mortises to one leg it'll be created in all of them so to do that I'm gonna take the leg that I drew first which is closest to the origin as well as the two aprons attached to it I'm gonna select those three components make a copy of them and move that off into an empty space in my drawing one of the nice things about SketchUp and working with components is I can leave the model intact yet pull pieces of it off to edit in an area where I have lots of room to maneuver. Now I still have these pieces selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to sec select explode from the menu. Now explode doesn't make a noise or th throw debris in the air or anything like that. It returns a component back into individual edges and faces. But it only affects those specific ones. The rest of the components in my model are still components and the pieces over here still exist. So I'm going to use the selection tool and then a delete key and I'm getting rid of everything in the apron except for the tenons and these are remnants of the face on the end of the apron and I'm going to select those and delete them. So now what I have the tenons that were in the leg are now mortises inside the leg. If I look at that with the x-ray view I can see that they're there. The problem I have is that this leg is no longer the leg component. What I'm going to do is to redefine the component. I'm going to select all these pieces I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click make component again. I'm going to give it the same name that I gave it before. When I click on create this pop-up warning shows that tells me a component with that name already exists and do I want to replace that definition with my new component. Well that's exactly what I want to do. I want to redefine the component so that the leg definition now includes these mortises. If I come back out to the model, look at the other legs, I've added the mortises to all four legs in the model. If we look inside, pull a leg away from the drawing, there they are. So I've added rather complicated joinery to all the parts of the model with just a little bit of editing. My table model is nearly complete. I just need to add a top. On the first table, we drew layout lines. We made the top down on the, the ground plane, extruded it to its thickness, and then moved it up into position. One of the nice features about SketchUp is I can use existing geometry to create new parts without a lot of calculating, without a lot of positioning. So I clicked from one corner to another to make a rectangle. Then with push-pull, I'm making the tabletop three-quarters of an inch thick. I'd like the top to overhang the edges by two inches. So I'm going to use push-pull and come out two this way, two inches that way. I'll orbit around to see the other corner. two inches there and two inches there. So I have the top. I'd like to make it a component. 
well we've been doing this the same way so I'm drawing a bounding box I want to be careful when I do this because I selected the aprons as well as the top so I'm going to position my point of view so that when I draw the bounding box I only have the tabletop completely enclosed within the, the box I'll right click I click make component and I make this a top there it appears in that window now I'd like to add a detail around the bottom edge of the tabletop I'd like to make a small radius the first method you might think of to do that would be to use push pull and extrude the radius along the edge but the problem with that is push pull doesn't turn corners there is a tool however called follow me which will turn a corner so if I open the top for editing I'm going to draw a simple radius with the arc tool here on the bottom edge now that tells me I'm drawing it on the face Follow Me can be a little tricky to use. It won't work on a component unless it's open for editing or unless it's exploded. Follow Me needs a face to extrude and it needs a path to follow. The easy way to do it is to select a face that's going to be the path. The perimeter of the bottom edge is going to be the extrusion path. So I pick the Follow Me tool and then simply click within that face. that extrudes that profile all the way around all the edges of the table so it meets neatly at the corner and miters the corners so by using a few simple tools making use of components making copies and follow me I've made a very detailed model that's more attractive than what I had before and it didn't take very long to do it. One of the truly great features about SketchUp is it's easy to make changes to things after you've built a model. What I've constructed here is coffee table size. It's 18 inches high. It's 24 inches wide and 36 inches long. Now if I show this to my wife, she's liable to say, that's very nice, honey, but I'd really like to have a lunch table that's similar to that. Could you make it a foot taller and, say, six inches longer in each direction? If I were drawing on paper and pencil or a normal CAD program, I'd probably have to start over. But in SketchUp, I can move things around. I'll take the top and I'll move it up 12 inches. That'll change my overall height from 18 inches to 30. Now I've got a normal table height. I'll take the aprons using the shift key in the select tool. I'll select all of those and I'll move those up 12 inches. So now I have those in position. I need to stretch the legs. These are components so if I change one I'm going to change them all. So I click edit the component. I take the selection box and I come down to a point where I'm including the lines that represent the start of the taper and include all of the mortises. Now when I move the top part of the leg, bring it up on the blue axis, type in 12 and hit enter, that stretches all the connected pieces to it. The next task is to make it longer and make it wider. I can do that by selecting components and groups. I'll select the legs and the apron on this end and I'll move them down the green axis six inches. I also want to change the width so I'll select that leg, the apron, and this leg and I'll move those six inches along the red axis. They're in position 
but that leaves the aprons too short. Well, I can edit the aprons one at a time. I'll grab everything on this end with the move tool. I just snap on the end point, pull it along the axis until it intersects a leg. Now you notice it changed the other one as well. So I only have to edit one component to change all components that are like that. I'll do the same thing. I'll select everything on the end of the leg. I'll take the move tool. I'll click on the point. And because when your a component is open for editing it's just edges and faces, things will stretch when you move them. So now I'm almost have my changes made. I'll take the top, open edit component, grab everything on the end, take the move tool, just pick a point, come over six inches on the green axis, type in the number and hit enter. I'll orbit around so I can see it in the other direction. Get everything on this side with the move tool, pull it out six inches in the red direction. So in just a few minutes I was able to take a coffee table convert it into a lunch table. What's nice about this is it didn't take me very long. The other good thing is I have all these parts that I can either pull from the components window or make copies of and the program is going to tell me how long this is, what size to make it. I didn't have to do any figuring on the taper, uh, position of the joints or anything like that. All of that is done for me as I change the component parts.